This is a way to learn for life, and our way to learn for life message for today is titled Prosperity from Charles Fillmore. Now, Charles Fillmore was the founder of the Unity Movement, and not only was Charles Fillmore someone who understood the consciousness of prosperity, but he understood the consciousness of healing. And Charles Fillmore was born with one foot shorter, or one leg, I should say, shorter than the other one, and he healed himself through spiritual healing. Now, not only did he heal himself, he, uh, many, many other healings were attributed to his consciousness and to his work with, with thousands of people, and he created the unity movement along with, <clears throat> with his wife. So we know that as we take into our mind a greater understanding, a greater consciousness of anything, that we shall receive a greater good, because God is the good, and God working through our mind, our heart, and our soul by our turning to God, our letting God in, listening for that still, small voice, listening for that guidance in that direction, trusting in God, having faith that God does respond to us by corresponding to our, that which we believe to be true for us, then we shall find ourselves realizing that those greater things still that Jesus says are ours to have, ours to do, and ours to be. So this is from the great Charles Fillmore. <clears throat> he writes, Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And in these words, Jesus expressed an infallible law of mind, the law that one idea must be dissolved before another can take its place. If you have in your mind any thought, that someone has wronged you, you cannot let in the cleansing power of the spirit and the richness of spiritual substance until you have cast out the thought of the wrong and have full, forgiven it fully. <clears throat> you may be wondering why you have failed to get spiritual illumination or to find the consciousness of spiritual substance. Perhaps the reason is here, a lack of room for the true thoughts because other thoughts fill your mind. If you are not receiving the spiritual understanding you feel you should have, you should search your mind carefully for unforgiving thoughts. Thoughts are things and occupy space in the mind realm. They have substance and form and may easily be taken as permanent by one not endowed with spiritual discernment. Well, let's, let's think about this. Thoughts are things and occupy space in the mind realm. In other words, in our mind, our heart, and our soul, we're all, it's where we hold all these thoughts and feelings about things. They have substance and form, and they easily be taken as permanent by one not endowed with spiritual discernment. They bring forth fruit according to the seed planted in the mind, but they are not enduring unless founded in spirit. In other words, we, we may believe in many false ideas, many false concepts, but they have no foundation unless they are <clears throat> part of the truth, unless they're founded in the spirit. Thoughts are alive and are endowed by the thinker with a secondary thinking power, that is, the thought entity that I am forms, assumes an ego, and begins to think on its own account. Thoughts also think, but only with the power we give them, only with the power we give to them. Tell me what kind of thoughts you are holding about yourself and your neighbors, and I can tell you just what you may expect in the way of health and finances and harmony in your home. Are you suspicious of your neighbors? You cannot love and trust in God if you hate and distrust men. The two ideas, love and hate, or trust and mistrust, simply cannot both be present in your mind at one time, and when you are entertaining one, you may be sure the other is absent. Trust other people and use the power that you accumulate from that act to trust God. There is magic in it. It works wonders. Love and trust are dynamic, vital powers. Love and trust are dynamic, vital powers. Are you accusing men of being thieves and fear that they are going to take away from you something that is your own? With such a thought, generating fear and even terror in your mind and filling your consciousness with darkness, where is there room for the Father's light of protection? Rather, build walls of love and substance around yourself. Send out swift, invisible messengers of love and trust for your protection. They are better guards than policemen or detectives. Do not judge others as regards their guilt or innocence. 
consider yourself and how you stand in the sight of, of God for having thoughts about another's guilt. Begin your reform within yourself. Renew a right spirit within me, we read in the Holy Scripture. That means much to one who enjoys an understanding of thought, mind, and spirit and its laws, though it may mean little to the ordinary individual. He who knows himself superficially, just his external personality, thinks he has reformed when he has conformed to the moral and governmental laws. He may even be filled with his own self-righteousness and daily lift up his voice to praise God that he is not as other men are, that he has forgiven men their transgression. He looks on all men who do not conform to his ideas of morality and religion as being sinners and transgressors, and thanks God for his own insight and keenness. But he is not at peace. Something seems lacking. God does not talk to him face to face because the mind where God and man meet is darkened by the murky thought that other men are sinners. Our first work at any demonstration is to contact God. Therefore, we must forgive all men their transgressions, just as the mastermind Jesus said, and through this forgiveness we cleanse our mind so that the Spirit of God can forgive us our own transgressions. Our forgiving all men includes ourselves. We must also forgive ourselves. Let the finger of denial erase every sin or fallen short that you have charged up against yourself. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pay your debt by saying to that part of yourself which you think has fallen short, thou art made whole, sin no more, lost a worse, lest a worse thing befall thee. Thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing befall thee. And we know those are words of Jesus to those who he healed. Then loose him and let him go. Treat sin, which is self-inflicted nonsense, as a mental transgression, instead of considering it as a moral deflection. Deny in thought all tendency to the error ways and hold yourself firmly to the Christ spirit, which is your divine self. Part company forever with accusing consciousness. Those who have resolved to sin no more have nothing in common with guilt. Shall I be in debt as long as I hold debts against others? Well, we find this to be the law of mind, the law of God. A thought of debt will produce debt. So long as we believe in debt, we will go into debt and accumulate the burdens that follow that thought. Whoever has not forgiven everyone their debts is likely to fall into debt themselves. Does this mean that you should give receipted bills to all those who owe you? No, that would not be erasing the thought of debt from your mind. First, deny in your mind that any man or woman owes you anything. If necessary, go over your list of names separately and sincerely forgive the thought of debt which you have been attaching to each person's name. More bills may be collected in this way than in any other, for many of these people will pay what they owe when you send them this forgiving thought. Debt is a contradiction of the universal equilibrium, and there be no such thing as lack of equilibrium in all the universe. Therefore, in spirit and in truth, there is no debt. However, men hold on to a thought of debt, and this thought is responsible for a great deal of sorrow and hardship. The true disciple realizes his supply in the consciousness of omnipresent, universally possessed abundance of God. Spirit substance is impartial and owned in common, and no thought of debt can enter into it. Now, this is pretty deep for a lot of people because we're so used to, to thinking about these, about these things on, in human terms, so it's hard for us to, to recognize that when... <clears throat> Excuse me, Charles Fillmore is talking from a higher level of, of understanding, a higher level of enlightenment, and a higher level of, of the realization of God's universal law for everyone. But let's just remember that Jesus tells us, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That's in the Lord's Prayer, which is the key to life, the key to life. <clears throat> what does he mean by forgive? He means to give it up, give it up from your mind, loose it from your mind. Loose debt for yourself, loose debt for others. Loose it all from your mind so that you can open your mind 
to that which that which brings a greater prosperity, a greater health, a greater happiness, and a greater joy. Let's continue with Charles Fillmore. He says, debts exist in the mind, and in the mind is the proper place to begin liquidating them. These thoughts and titles <coughs> must be passed away and stayed away. The world can never be free from the bondage of financial obligations until everyone erases from their mind the thoughts of mine and thine that generates debts and interest. Analyze the thought of debt, and you will see that it involves a thought of lack. Debt is a thought of lack with absence at both ends. The creditor thinks he lacks what is owed him, and the debtor thinks he lacks what is necessary to pay. Else he would discharge the obligation rather than continue it. Nobody wants to live in debt. There is error at both ends of the proposition and nothing in the middle. This being true, it should be easy to dissolve the whole thought that anyone owes us or that we owe anyone anything. We should fill our mind with thoughts of all sufficiency, not only for ourselves, but for those who owe us or those, those who we owe money to. And where there is no lack, there can be no debt. Thus, we find that the way to pay our debts is by filling our mind with the substance of ideas that are the direct opposite of the thoughts of lack that cause the debt. Ideas of abundance will more quickly and surely bring what is ours to us than any thoughts we can hold about debtors discharging their obligations to us. See substance everywhere and affirm it, not only for yourself but for everyone else. And what is substance? It's the intelligence, the power, and the spirit of God forming, bringing together all things necessary for us to have that true prosperity, that true prosperity. So we can see substance everywhere and affirm it, not only for ourselves, but for everyone else. Especially affirm abundance for those whom you have held in the thought of owing you. Thus you will help them pay their debts more quickly if you merely erase, then if you merely erase their names from your book of accounts receivable. Help pay the other fellow's debts by forgiving him his debts and declaring for him the abundance that is already his in spirit. The idea of abundance will also bring its fruits into your own life. Let the law of plenty work itself out in you and in your affairs. This is the way the Spirit of God forgives our debts, not by canceling them on, on his books, but by erasing them from his mind. Let's remember they're them no more against you than you can deny their reality by taking it into your mind that somehow, some way, you're owed something. Sometimes people, even when they get the debt repaid, they get the debt repaid, they still think, oh, well, I loaned them money when they really needed it, and they still hold that debt against people. So let's go back to Charles Fillmore. The idea of abundance will also bring its fruits into your own life. Let the law of plenty work itself out in you and in your affairs. This is the way the Spirit forgives your debts, not by canceling them, but by erasing them from mind, from mind, from spirit. God remembers them no more against you than, than you can deny that, that reality. The Father is the everywhere present spirit in which all that appears has its origin. Everything comes from God. Everything is a part of God. God's love sees you always well and happy and abundantly provided for, but God's wisdom demands that order and right relation exist in our mind before it may become manifest in our affairs as abundance. God's love would give you your every desire but God wisdom ordains that you and me and everyone forgive our debtors before our debts are forgiven. Forgive us this day. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now that's, that takes some work. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. So we know that there's no forgiveness of our debts. There's no forgiveness of our sins, our self-inflicted nonsense, until we lose that idea that we hold something or we can withhold something from someone else. To remedy any, let's go back to Fillmore, to remedy any state of limited finances or ill health that has been brought about by worry, one must begin by eliminating the worry that is the original cause. One must free one's mind from the burden of debt 
before the debt can be paid. Many people have found that the statement, I know I owe no man anything but love, I owe no man anything but love, has helped them greatly to counteract this thought of debt. As they used the words, their minds were open to an inflow of divine love, and they faithfully cooperated with the divine law of forgiveness in thought and word and deed. They built up such a strong consciousness of the healing and enriching power of God's love that they could live and work peacefully and profitably with their associates. Thus, renewed constantly in health and faith and in integrity, they were able to meet every obligation that came to them. The statement, I know I owe no one anything but love, does not mean that we can disclaim owing our creditors money or try to evade the payment of obligations we have incurred. The thing denied is the burdensome thought of debt or of lack. The work of paying debt is an inner work having nothing to do with the debts already owed, but with the wrong thoughts that produce them. When one holds to the right ideas, burdensome debts will not be contracted. Debts are produced by thoughts of lack, impatient desire, and covetousness. When these thoughts are overcome, debts are overcome, forgiven, and paid in full, and we are free from them for all time. That's from Charles Fillmore. So he's telling us that we must we use wisdom. We must use wisdom. You know, so many years ago, I was listening to Dr. Robert Bitzer at the Hollywood Church. This was probably in 1991, 92, somewhere like that. And he said we should never use credit cards. The only things we should ever finance are things that, we, that can be sold, resold at a profit, such as our home or such as our car. He said anything, anything else is debt, and we should avoid it. Credit cards are debts that we should avoid. Even if we say, oh, well, I'll pay it off at the end of the month, it's still a debt. It's still a debt. Get yourself a debit card. Use the money that you have and no more, and you will avoid debt. Take the idea of debt out of your mind. Take the idea that somebody owes you something. Take the idea that you owe someone else something and see yourself. See yourself fully paid in all things and see yourself fully, fully and completely free of debt. Debt owed and debt <clears throat> owed to us. Let's go back to Charles Fillmore. Your thoughts should be at all times, your thoughts should at all times be worthy of your highest self, your fellow man and God. The thoughts that most frequently work ill to us and our associates are thoughts of criticism and condemnation. Free your mind of them by holding the thought, there is now no condemnation in Christ Jesus. There is now no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Fill your mind with thoughts of divine love, justice, peace, and forgiveness, and this will pay your debts of love, which are the only debts you really owe. Then see how quickly and easily and naturally all your outer debts will be paid, and all in, harm in, in harmonies of mind, body, and affairs smoothed out at the same time. Nothing will so quickly enrich our mind and free it from every thought of lack as the realization of divine love, the realization of God's love. God's love will quickly and perfectly free us from the burden of debt and heal us of our physical infirmities, our physical diseases, often caused by depression, worry, and financial fear. Love will bring our own to us and adjust all misunderstandings and make our life and affairs healthy and happy, harmonious and free, as they should be. Love, indeed, is the fulfillment of the law. Why? Because love is of God, and love is the healing power of God as it works itself through our mind, our heart, and our soul. So the way is now open for each and every one of us to pay our debts, surrender them to God along with all our doubts and fears, follow the light that is flooded into our mind. God's power, love, and wisdom are here, for God's kingdom is within you, just as the mastermind Jesus said. Give God full dominion in your life and affairs. Give God intelligent power and spirit, your business, your family affairs, your finances, and let this power, intelligence, and spirit that knows what to do and how to do it, 
figure out how to pay your debt. But what God is going to do for us, God must do through us, and so we must give up, forgive debt. God is even doing it now, Charles Fillmore tells us, for it is his righteousness desire to free us from every burden. And God is leading us out of the burden of debt, whether of owing or being owed, to meet every insidious thought such as I can't or I don't know how, I can't see the way with the declaration that Jehovah is my shepherd, I shall not want. Jehovah is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want the wisdom. I shall not want the courage. I shall not want the substance to do with when whatever it is that comes into my life, I know that the almightiness of God is leading me into green pastures and besides the still waters. In the kingdom of truth and the reality, ideas are the coin of the spiritual realm. We can use the new ideas that divine wisdom is now quickening our mind and start this very moment to pay our debts. Begin by thanking God for your freedom from the debt burden thought. Begin by thanking God for your freedom from the debt burden thought. This is an important step in breaking the shackles of debt. The funds to pay all your bills may not suddenly appear in a lump sum, but as you watch and work and pray, holding yourself in the consciousness of God's wisdom God's guidance and direction and God's abundance, you will notice your funds beginning to grow here a little, there a little, and increasingly more and more rapidly as your faith increases and your ancient thought, anxious thoughts of worry and doubt and fear are still. For with the increase will come added good judgment and wisdom in the management of our affairs. Dead is soon vanquished when wisdom and good judgment are in control. And that's the truth for me and the truth for you and the truth for everyone.